These eight Canva features are game changers, especially if you're just getting started. From better element search to faster download and cleaner layouts, these tips will seriously level up your designs. And the best part? Everything I show you today works with the free version of Canva, which means no pro subscription needed. Let's get started. The first feature I will show you in this video will help you find similar elements or keyword related to elements you want to add to your design. I will use this photography list template to show you the features in this video. And I've added this hand-drawn camera for the first example. Now, if I want to add more elements that are similar to this one, but I'm not sure how to search for it in the elements library, what I can do is right click on this element and click on info down here. Inside the info panel, I will see the element's name, which is camera hand drawn. And I will also see the creator of the element. I can click here to visit the creator's library and see all of their uploaded elements and photos. If I were looking for an image, this library could help me because I can find visuals in the same style and concept. But since I'm looking for more elements like this camera, I'll go back to info, and down here I can see the keywords that help me find similar elements. I can also click show all keywords and Canva will display all the keywords related to this element. I can click on one of the keywords and Canva will automatically search for it in the elements tab. Another option is to click see more like this and Canva will search for similar elements based on those keywords. As you can see, I can now find lots of different options for hand-drawn cameras and related elements. Let's click on one, make it a bit smaller and position it in the right place. So that's a pretty cool way to find similar elements to your design. Now let's move on to the next feature, which is also related to element search and that's filter. So let's say I search again for hand-drawn camera I want a graphic, so I will click see all to browse all graphics. Now let's say I'm using the free version of Canva and I see that these two elements are for pro accounts, but I want to find a free version. So I'll click the filter icon next to the search bar and then filter the results by price. I will choose free and now I can see only the free options in the elements library. I will just choose the element I want and replace the pro one with the free one. Let me just reposition it like this. And just so you know, you can also filter by other things. For example, you can filter by color or orientation. So if you're looking only for vertical image, for example, you can select that option. Let's uncheck the free filter now and you can also filter by animated if you want something like GIF or moving graphic. Once you select animated, Canva will show animated graphics you can add to your design. As you can see, the search isn't always perfect. I search for hand-drawn camera and not all the results are cameras or even hand-drawn. Some are just related to the topic. But overall, using filters can help you find what you need much faster. The next feature is called Arrange or Align, and it's a very important feature if you want your designs to look neat and organized. So, for example, let's work on package number one. Right now, all the text is centered exactly in the middle of this image. But let's say I want it to be aligned to the left. I will start by changing the alignment inside the text boxes to be aligned to the left like this. As you can see, the text box with the word package is not aligned exactly like the rest of the text boxes. To align all these text boxes to the left, I'll select all of them. Then I'll go to position up here and make sure I'm under a range. Here under a range, I will see align elements. Just so you know, if you select more than one element, meaning two or more, you will see the option to align elements, which means aligning the elements to each other. For example, if I click on left, all these elements will be aligned to the left. As you can see, they are all now on the same line. 
But if I click on just one element and go to position again, I will see align to page, which means aligning this element to the page. So if I click middle, it will align the element to the middle of the page. What I want is to align this with the rest of the elements. So I will select all the elements I want to align together. Then I will click on align elements and choose left. Now for the other titles, package one, two, and three, I want all of them to be aligned to the middle. So they will be on the same line. If I'm not sure whether they are already aligned, I'll select these three elements, go to position again and pick middle. Now I can be sure these three elements are on the same line. Of course, you can also align things to the center. For example, if I want all these elements to be aligned to the center, I will go to position again, and I can see that center is already selected. I can't click it again, which means it's already aligned to the center. Let's just choose left, and now all the elements are aligned to the left. But why don't I see this here? That's because each of these text boxes is aligned to the middle. The text is in the center of the text box. So before I choose to align elements in a certain direction, like to the left, for example, I need to make sure the text alignment inside the box is also set to the same direction. I can select these four text boxes, align the text inside them to the left first, and then select them all again, go to position, and make sure they are aligned to the left. If I want to make sure that the text up here is centered on the page, meaning it's exactly at the center point, I will click on one text box, go to position again, and I will see that this element is aligned to the center of the page. I can check the rest of the elements too, if I select all three of them, I will see they are also aligned to the center of each other. This is a really good thing to know and you can use it in many ways. Last thing here is space evenly. If I select all three, go to position again, I will see they are already spaced evenly. Let's mess it up a bit and do that again. Click position then click vertically and they will have the same spacing between each other. Let's just center it. It's important to note that space evenly works within the space between the first and last element. So for example, if I move this one down to align with the bottom of the others and move this one up to align with the top of the others, then select all four elements, go to position and click vertically. It will organize the spacing between the first and the last elements. So just so you know, it's easier to work like that when using a range. All right, so the next feature I want to show you will help you organize things in your design. This is rulers and guides, which you can add to your design to help you position things in the right place. Let's start with one that's simpler and easier to understand, rulers. I'll go to File, then Settings, and click on Show Rulers and Guides. You can also use a keyword shortcut, Shift and R. Then I'll see rulers appear at the top and on the left. I can click on them and drag to create new ruler lines. Let's say I want the bottom margin to be the same distance as the top margin in my design. I'll start by checking the ruler. This one is placed at 11 millimeter. Now, if I check the total height of my design, it's 297 millimeter. So if the top ruler is at 11, then 297 minus 11 equals 286. That means I should drag another ruler to 286. Now I have two ruler lines with the same space from the top and the bottom. Let's drag this box to align it with the ruler. 
I'll delete the text and the lines here and now the spacing at the top and bottom is equal. Alright, now let's use guides. Let's say I want to delete one of the packages here and only display two packages that I'm offering. I'll delete package 2 for this example, just remove everything related to it. I will also delete one of the lines because I only need one. Now I will change this one to say package 2. Of course I can rename these properly, but for this example we will keep them as package 1 and package 2. Now I can use the arrange feature I showed earlier to organize the elements. But positioning the elements at the center of the page won't help me in this case. I want to position them more precisely. Let's start by making sure this line is in the center of the page. I'll click on center. Now I want to add guides to help me position everything else. I'll go to file, settings, and this time click add guides. Then I'll see a menu where I can choose how I want the guides to look. There are a few presets or I can customize my own. For now, I need zero rows and two columns. And let's say I want a gap of 30. I will click add guides and now I can make sure that my elements touch these guides properly. Let's adjust the elements on both sides to align with the guides. Now I can clear those guides if I want to. Now let's say I want to bring back the third package. I'll add new guides again. So I will go to file, then settings and click add guides. This time I will choose three columns and I don't want any gap between them. Then I will click add guides. Now I'll take the first package and position it right at the first guide. Then I'll move the line to align with that guide as well. Let's just adjust the spacing a bit. Next, I will take package 2 and position it in the center of the page. Let's duplicate it. Now that's package 3. I want all three packages to have equal spacing. So I'll copy the line and paste it again on the third guide. Now I'll group each package with its elements, then I'll select all three groups, go to position and align them to the top. I can also try space evenly, horizontally, just to make sure it's balanced. Move things a little if needed and then clear the guides. And voila, three packages neatly organized and looking great. So if you've made it this far, you're not just curious about Canva, you actually care about getting better at it. So I want to share something I made for myself that might help you too. I call it Canva Second Brain and Notion Database with all the tools, features, and quick guides I've saved from using Canva so I can find what I need without digging through endless videos. Whenever I get stuck or need inspiration, I go there. If you want access, the link is in the description and I added a little discount for you. The next feature is swap position and it's easier than you think. It allows you to switch positions between elements with just a few clicks. Let me show you how to do it. You need to select two or more elements at the same time and then you can just drag this little circle to swap the position of the elements. It works with any type of element, even images. As you can see, I can just click, hold and then drag it to the spot I want. If I select three items, for example, I can swap them into the positions I need. It's a super useful and easy tool that I recommend you to use. It will make your design process a lot faster. And the next feature is also super quick but very useful, and that is download selection. You can download specific parts of your design without having to download the entire page. Let me show you what I mean. If I want to download only this part of my design, maybe to use it in another project or add it to a different design or video, I can just select more than one element. It won't work with only one element, you need two or more. Then just right click on the selected elements and choose download selection. You will then see the usual download settings, but without the option to choose pages since you're only downloading the selected items. You can adjust the size, limit it to a specific dimension, 
compress the file and even choose to download it with a transparent background, which is a huge plus in my opinion. I use Canva a lot to generate design elements, I add to videos and this option really makes the process quick and easy. Once you're happy with the download settings, just click download and the elements you selected will be saved to your computer. Let's move on to the next feature which lets you filter the font library. Let me show you how to do it. Just click on one of the text boxes in your design and go to the font library. Then next to the search bar you will see the option to filter the fonts. Click on it and you will see a list of font languages you can browse. For example, if the language you're designing in isn't English and you want to browse fonts that are relevant to your language, you can filter the font list accordingly. You can also choose to see only free or pro fonts, which is super helpful if you're using the free version of Canva. This way you can avoid falling in love with a font only to find out it's for pro users. Instead, just filter by plan and you will only see fonts that you can actually use. The last feature in this video is Fade Effect Shape. Let me show you what it is. Let's say I want to transform this price list into something that looks more professional. And I was thinking of changing the background to an image of a photo studio, something like this. But now all the text is barely visible on top of the image and it's almost impossible to read it. So let me show you how I use the Fade Effect Shape to solve this. I'll press R on my keyboard to create a new rectangle. And then I'll stretch it across the entire design, just like this. Now I'll move it down in the Layers panel, placing it above the background but below all the other elements. Then I'll go to the Color section and change the fill to a gradient. I'll make both sides black and I'll change the left color's opacity to 0%. Next, I'll change the gradient style to this one. Now I have a nice gradient fade that makes all the text in my design bold and easy to read. I can adjust the shape by stretching it depending on which parts of the design I want to emphasize. You can do this with any color you need and place the fade beneath your elements to make them pop in your design. And now the result looks way more professional compared to the first version. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you want even more exclusive tips and early updates before anyone else, join my free newsletter. I'll see you in the next video.